Hello everybody. So today I have a um, new topic that I want to bring up. I wanted to just basically piggyback off of yesterday's video. And if you haven't seen it and you're interested, um, it is called um, Praying for a Physical Door to Open and Being Obedient to God's Word. So I just basically feel like there was a lot left out and maybe I left people hanging. Maybe, you know, you need um, a, a sense of direction of where to go as far as a relationship that you're in, a relationship that you're wanting, your marriage. And let me just say, I am not an expert in marriage. I'm not a marriage counselor. I have many issues of my own, just like everybody else. But I just want to share with you what I have learned in this relationship slash marriage that I am in. And um, maybe this will help somebody. So let me just say, um, when I had my, when I got my first divorce in 2010, um, after that, I had been praying, um, even though I wasn't saved and I didn't know Christ, I'd been praying for God to send me somebody, uh, send me a man that would help me through my issues and, um, uh, love me through my issues and me love him through his issues and us come together as one to Christ. That's what I was praying. Now, let me say that um, my first marriage, um, he actually did come to me before we had gotten divorced after our baby had passed away and told me, he had been started going to church and he told me, you know, he was saved and he started trying to explain to me, um, his experience and how he got saved and, you know, what he was learning. And I was very, very upset. I did not want to hear it. I did not want any part of it. It made me mad because I had just lost my son and I felt like, you know what? I gave all my, put all my faith into Christ thinking that, you know, I felt like 100% my son was going to make it. My son was not going to die. And so when he did, I, in all honesty, I felt like I hated God. I wanted nothing to do with him. I was so hurt. And the last thing I wanted to hear was my husband during that time going to church, getting saved, coming home, all happy and joyful, trying to tell me about it. And it came to a point where I'm like, you know what? You need to stop. And if you don't, we're going to get divorced. And so eventually, not for that reason, we did get divorced. So I just want to put that out there. You know, I've been praying for God to send me somebody. And I, you know, like I said, I didn't know who Christ was. I just felt like, you know what? I feel like there's a God out there. I don't have the answers. But if there is, you know... I don't, I need a better life. I need to change. And so I knew, I knew I needed help. And in a lot of ways, I felt like, you know, I'd pray like my beliefs were different. I didn't know Christ. So I believed, you know, in soulmates and I believed in astrology and numerology and stuff like that, which actually led me farther from the word of God. And so there were times that I would pray and I'm like, you know, if you just want to, you know, send me my soulmate and send me the, you know, this person that's, you know, perfect and we just get along and everything just works out and, you know, we don't fight and argue. And so I'd pray that, but I also need my heart. I'm like, um, I know what I need and I know that I need somebody that's gonna actually going to stay on their ground with me. That's going to put me in my place when I need to. I need a man to actually be a man and not bow down to me. And I knew that, but I didn't want, I didn't want to struggle. I didn't want, a, I didn't want a relationship or a marriage where it was going to be a struggle. I just wanted everything to be easy. Just like we all do. So, and God had actually had put a couple people in my life, um, that had, that was, that tried to talk to me about Christ, but I was just, I was blinded and, um, there wasn't a lot of time and effort into, um, 
really trying to um, explain it to me. And maybe that was because they knew that I was lost and I was just a very stubborn, hard-headed person. And I'm like, you know what? I don't believe fully in the Bible. I believe in bits and pieces of it. And I believe in astrology and in numerology. And I believe in soulmates, okay? That's what I believe. And, you know, you're sitting here saying, basically, that, you know, you got to be a robot. And I'm not no robot, okay? I can't do what you're telling me to do. And... So that's how I felt, and that's how it was. So God had sent me people in my life. I just never give, gave them a chance because I didn't realize what God was doing. So when it comes to um, the man I'm with now, you know, at the end of the video, I said of you know yesterday's video, um, which is called um, praying for a physical door to open and being obedient to God's word. So the end of that video, I was I said that you know we decided to, that we were going to come together to Christ, um, you know, in a vow that you know we want to be honored. I'm sorry, that's my son playing in the background. So um, we decided to come together in Christ, you know, in a vow. And not just run to the courthouse or, you know, have a wedding to just to get that piece of paper. Because um, we had both been married before and that's what we had done. And it didn't work out. So the most important thing to us was go before God, you know. And so that's what we did. Well, um, the more you see Christ and the more that you try the more the devil is coming after you. He knows what you're doing. He knows that um, you are a, you know, you are an enemy of his and he's going to do everything he can to stop you. So just because I came back and we decided, yes, we want to be together. Yes, we're coming hand in hand in marriage to God and we're asking him to bless this. didn't mean things were perfect because they got worse. And they got worse to the extent of it was so bad that I that I left again. And there was an extreme amount of hurt hurt on my behalf that I just felt like there was just basically no forgiveness there that I could that I could have for him, nor did I want to forgive him. I've put all my effort into this relationship. I tried my hardest. I was trying to live for God. I was trying to not be an alcoholic. I was trying not to run to the bars. And for those of you that know me and my past and stuff, you know, like I was, you know, pretty crazy wild par partier. And um, when it came to any relationship that I was in after my first marriage, um, basically a lot of things were my way. And um, there really wasn't. The effort that I put into this, I had never put in, put this much work into anything in my life. So I just came to a point where I'm done. There's no forgiveness in me. I can't do it, nor do I want to. Well, I started living, you know, I started getting to be able to live a more of a normal life. I was able to get a job. I got my driver's license back. And now this is before my second DUI. This is before we actually got married, you know, by by the world standards of the law. And so, you know, I had an opportunity to basically do whatever I wanted to do and to move forward in my life in a different direction if that's what I wanted. If, deep down in my heart, that is not what I wanted. I wanted to continue living for Christ. I wanted somebody that was standing strong for Christ. And I wanted... I knew that, like, I needed somebody to um, stand their ground with me and not let me have my way and just be strong in their faith and strong in their morals and values. Um, and I knew, like I said, I knew I had a lot of unforgiveness in me. So there came a point that I said, Jesus, you're going to have to help me. You know, 
I need you to help me forgive because I can't forgive him. I do not want to forgive him. And there's a scripture here that I want to just share real fast. And it is um, 2 Corinthians um, in the King James, and it's 12, 8, uh, uh, I think it's uh, chapter 12, verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I gather glory and in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay, so even if we're not talking about the situation that I'm in, if you've asked Christ to help you with something and he hasn't, he's saying his grace, grace is sufficient for you. Um, or, my grace is sufficient for thee. Yes. So there's a reason why he's not removing the situation. Um, and what I have learned is, first of all, if you, when you are weak, Christ is strong, okay? So I felt like I was weak. I could not forgive him, and I needed I needed Christ to help me. So yes, I started praying, help me forgive him. Um, and it wasn't that I wanted to come back to him. I just knew that I didn't need to have unforgiveness in my heart because if you can't forgive, then God can't forgive you of your sins. So I just started praying that, and I started praying it like three, four times, and I tell you what, like, right away, honestly, there was just a complete peace upon me. I would forgiven him, and it wasn't me, but it was Christ in me that helped me do that. And I don't even, I just don't even really remember how it came about, but I contacted him, and yet, again, everything was just, we just knew that, yes, God is, God's hand is as God's hand is here. He, you know, this is who I'm supposed to be with. I am who he is supposed to be with. And we are going to continue this um, relationship. And we're going to continue trying. Um, because we know what our souls want. But, you know, we're just having a difficult time with our flesh. And we're having a difficult time keeping our mouth shut. And we just needed... Um, we just need to keep seeking Christ and just trying to keep going forward. And so let me say that if you are praying for something and you have a hindrance in your way and you have, you know, thorns, if you have, a, if you have addiction or whatever it is, there's a reason why God's not removing it. First of all, yes, you have to repent and you have to try to put it down. You have to try to put effort into it. But... God will remove it when he's ready to remove it. I promise you that. He did it for me in many areas of my life. When you are weak, he is strong. So, yes, when we feel like we're strong and we're on top of the world and we're doing good, we're very unlikely to be, be praying to Christ asking for help. When we are weak and we're struggling, we are, we're on our knees, we're crying, we're begging, help me, I need your help, I can't do this on my own. You know, that's when Christ is strong, is when you're weak. That's when he's like, okay, you're asking me to come into your life, you're asking me for help, here I am. I'm going to show you who I am, and I'm going to help you. So, that's something that you need to understand. Now, as far as um, the order of... Um, God's order for marriage. Um, yes, we uh, did come together um, as husband and wife by law in 2017. And things are still not perfect. And we love each other dearly. And we still believe God has put us together. And... I have said many, many times, relationships and marriages are not perfect. And if you say that, that, that yours is, you might be lying. I'm not going to say you are lying, but you might be lying. Um, let me say that um, if you are, if you don't know if you're going to heaven, if you don't know if you're truly saved, 
then it's going to be harder for you to understand where I'm coming from, number one. Number two, God says, do not be unequally yoked. Okay, well, when me and my husband got together, we were un unequally yoked because he was not, or he was saved and I wasn't. But it also says that you can be unequally yoked and that their salvation might win the other person's salvation, which is exactly what happened to me. Now, when me and him met, he was struggling with his own baggage, his own divorce and stuff like that. So it wasn't like he was in the he wasn't in the word. He wasn't, you know, living the strongest that he normally would be because he was weak. So when he was weak, God was strong. He was actually praying for God to send a woman into his life. And I had been praying for God to send a man into my life since 2010. And that's how me and him know that we are meant to be together. Okay. So, um, let me just say that me and him have had tons of arguments and tons of discussions and tons of coming together. But this is the order that it's supposed to be. If you don't understand it, okay, another thing. Um, the very first thing that you and your relationship sh you should be doing or you and your marriage should be doing if you're needing help is you need to start opening up the Bible. Whether you're the only one doing it or they're the only one doing it or you guys are coming together, that's what you really need to do. If you're really needing that change, you're really needing to be blessed, you really need to come together, the very first thing you need is Christ. Um, so, you might believe this or not believe this, but I can tell you with my own experience, this is definitely how it seems for me. Now, if you're in a bad situation and you feel like that you are, you're being abused and you, you know, you're in harm, Obviously, you're going to have to make that decision whether you're going to stay or whether you're going to leave. That is not up to anybody but you, okay? So, this is what I want to explain to you. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, and I, I, uh, through uh, verse 29. So, let me see. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Let me first tell you that my husband has told me for seven years now that the problem between us is that I need to submit to him. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have yelled at him and cussed him out every time that he's brought that up. And I am not playing. And anybody that knows me knows that I am not going to submit to nobody. The only person I'm going to submit to is Christ. And that's what I have told him for many, many years. I'm not submitting to you. You're freaking crazy. And so let me get back to that, though. So verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Okay. Christ created the husband, the man, to be the head. Okay, so the man, you know, people say that men and women are um, different, that, you know, women live off of emotions and feelings and men are more logic. Okay, that kind of makes more sense. Men uses their, you know, and I'm not saying that men are smarter than women or whatever, but Ace, no. That's daddy's. It will fall and it will bust. So please leave it alone. Please stop it. Please give me a minute. Hang on. Hang on. So, um, where was I at? Sorry. So, God created men, and it says, you know, the head of a man is Christ. And the woman, it was, you know, God took Adam's rib and made a woman. God took um, Adam's rib and made a woman to be a helpmate to Adam. 
and we are considered the women are considered the church and um god says for the man for the husband to love the wife as christ loved the church okay so christ loved the church so much that he gave his body up i mean he he hung on the cross for us um he was you know persecuted and and um for us that's how much christ loved the church and that's how the husband is supposed to treat the wife well I'm sorry I didn't finish what I was trying to read so verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by by the word that he might present it to himself as a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord, even, even as the Lord, the church. So, basically, what I'm saying is there's an order that God has done, and there's a reason for it. And it actually says somewhere um, that there is a great mystery to this. And, you know, my husband has told me for all these years, for like seven years now, the problem between us is that I need to submit to him. And I'm cussing him out and yelling at him and telling him he needs to shut up because I'm not submitting to nobody. I wasn't raised that way. I've put up with enough of my life. I've, I've been ran over. I've been cheated on. I've been lied to. And I ain't putting up with anybody's bull crap. And that's the truth. And I've known many women that has been, you know, battered and abused and being in situations. I've known many women that have submitted to their husbands or their relationships and they're being abused. And there was no... Um, blessings there was no honor in that um but if you're going if you're a man and a man and you're and you're watching this and you want to live right you need to treat the you need to treat your wife you need to treat your relationship as christ did the church you need to love her and you need to treat her like a queen wives or the woman that you know if you're in a relationship I am just now seeing, I'm telling you, just re very recently, okay? There are many times in my, in, in this marriage, and I'm sure many of others, you think, we are not getting along. Like, for me, like, sometimes we don't get along, and I'm like, man, there, we, we have, a, we have issues. And I'm like, how are we going to come together? How are we going to, you know, we're arguing every day. And we have good moments. I mean, our good moments outright are bad moments. But, you know, I still have these thoughts, just like every relationship does. And so I've been going through this, like I have, always. And um, I finally just recently decided, you know what? Oh, and before I continue what I'm trying to say, he always said, he always said, I'm not telling you to submit the way that you think I'm telling you to submit. I'm telling you, you need to submit in love. You need to submit like, like, uh, like you're submitting to Christ. Oh, and I just wasn't having it. I'm like, no, I'm not doing what you're telling me to do. Well, recently I decided, you know what? I'm not going to fall into the, like, the negativity. I'm not going to feed into it like I normally do. You know, if he comes home and he's in a bad mood or whatever, I'm not going to, you know, get upset and think that he ha he's always telling me, you know, maybe he's just tired or whatever. And it goes both ways. So I'm not, you know, don't sit here and say I'm just bad mouthing him because I'm not. This goes for me too. There's times that, you know what, I'm not feeling good and I have an attitude and I, you know, I don't really feel like, you know, being... I guess, um, a good person, <laughs> you know, we've all been there. And, um, so I decided, 
um, you know what? I'm just not going to feed into it. And I'm just going to start just, I'm just going to be happy. And I'm just going to, if he's in a bad mood, I'm just going to ignore it. So that's what I started doing. And I started ignoring, like, he's in a bad mood or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not going to be mean, you know. Um, I do have a problem, you know, cussing. I cuss a lot. And I don't want to because I know it's sinful. I know it's not, you know, I don't want to be represented that way. I don't want, you know, to cuss around my kids or nothing like that. So I just, you know, just trying to stop cussing and just trying to be a better person like Christ wants us to be. And I'm telling you for the first time, I just feel a peace over me. I feel joy over me. Um, and I realize it is a form of submission. It's a, it's a form of submission of love. So it's, yes, I am not submitting like I always thought I was going to, like what he was telling me that I never understood. He's saying, you know, submit like you're submitting to Christ. Well, God's saying submit, like submit in love. Okay, well, what I'm understanding now is just listening to Christ. You know, I love Christ. I want to listen to him. I want to, I just, you know, I want this relationship to work. I want this marriage to work. I want to be a better person. And obviously, there's no good coming out of feeding off this negativity and, you know, allowing the, these demonic spirits or whatever it is that comes between us thrive. No, I don't want that. I want our family together. I want us to last. I want my son to have his dad in his life. I don't want a broken marriage like my first one. And my daughter, you know, has to suffer through that. And, you know, go to his house on the week, go see her dad on the weekends and stuff. I don't want that. So I'm telling you that when the word says to submit, submit in love. Like this is like the very first time in seven years, like I am getting it. And it's not that things are, you know, obviously things aren't perfect, but I feel joy. I know what I'm doing is right. I know that having this positive attitude and just ignoring the, um, that spirit that's coming at me, um, just ignoring, like, you know, what, just trying, like, um, if, if a customer wants to come out of my mouth and I stop it, it's like, I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm not just allowing my flesh to just thrive off that negativity or, you know, the, what God doesn't want us to be like. So my point is there is order and there's a reason for this order. And if you really want a relationship to work, you both need to get in the word of God. Like, I am not playing. Like, you want to be blessed and you want this person in your life. Because I see people and they're, you know, they're posting things like, you know, I get cheated on. I get lied to. I know. I've been there. Start praying for God, for God to, you know, send you a godly man. Send you somebody that you guys can work together in, the, in your guys' issues. Start looking in better places. Stop going to the bar, you know. If you're wanting, if you're wanting a better life, if you're wanting to be blessed, start turning from the ways that you know that are probably not healthy for you. So anyway, I just want to say that I think I got everything out. I'm so sorry that my son was over here crying and getting upset, but I'm very happy that I was able to say what I needed to say. And uh, you know what? I love y'all, and I do really wish the best for you. And you know. If there's anything that I can help you all with, if there's any questions, you know, I am more than willing to talk with you and, you know, share anything to an extent, you know, like I said, I don't want to say too much. Um, this is my testimony. This is not my husband's testimony. This is not other people's testimonies. So there's things that I'm, I'm going, I'm not going to say, you know, it's not the public's, you know, business, but, um, there's no way for me to say what I need to say without giving out some information. So anyway, y'all have a, a blessed day. God bless. I hope you understand what I'm, what I'm trying to put out there. And I'm just trying to help y'all. You know what? This world's crazy and we, we all need Jesus. Regardless, we all need Jesus in all of our ways. So take care. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye.